The harsh reality is this. No matter how simple your application is going to be, you will have some JavaScript. In fact, I would bet that a large part of, part of your time will be spent working with JavaScript, especially when you compare it to your HTML and CSS. And being able to quickly find and fix problems in your JavaScript will save you a lot of that time. So what I'm going to show you today is some features in Firebug which make this really possible, namely the ability to set and modify and work with breakpoints. So let's get started. What I have here is a very simple example. You just have a page that I just loaded initially has a blue color to it. There are three buttons at the bottom, one green, one gray, and one blue. So when I click on the green button, notice that a large part of this page has a green color to it. When I hit gray, things turn gray. When I hit blue, nothing really happens. Things are still in the, in the gray state. And what we're going to do is figure out how to fix your application so that hitting the blue button also gives you that blue look, the look you see when you first load the page for the first time. So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is just take a look at how this application works. So I just have the source of this file currently displayed in, in Firefox. And let's start with the style rules that cause the colors to look the way they do. I have three buckets of style rules. Those that start with a, a selector of green, those that start with a selector of gray, and those that start with a selector of blue. And what I'm doing is this. Each time you click on either green or the gray or the blue button, I'm using JavaScript to actually modify the class value that is set in my document. So if I have a green class value set, you can see the style rules that start with green getting applied. Same with gray and same with blue, which is not working right now, but that's our job to fix it. And the JavaScript, based on my description, closely mimics what is going on. I get a pointer to all three of the images, which is these buttons using the standard query selector. The, each of these buttons has an ID value, green image, gray image, and blue image. And all I'm doing is when you click on each button, we call the toggle class values event handler that contains the code to say, okay, you know, the button that I put clicked right now, which I can get by the target.id property from the event argument, if it's green, go ahead and add the green class to my document and then remove blue and gray because we don't want to have you know multiple class values that are competing for attention. And if it's blue, go ahead and add the blue class value, remove gray and green. If I'm in click on the gray button, for example, then make sure that blue and green class values are removed and only gray is active. And all of this is done just to make sure that the appropriate style rules here get applied. And of course, we need to figure out why the blue doesn't work. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is hit F12 to launch Firebug. And when you launch it for the first time, go ahead and hit the script tab, because this is where we're going to be spending a lot of our time, especially for what we're going to be doing. Now, if you hit the script tab on a document that's already been loaded, you're going to be asked to reload the page. So just go ahead and hit, hit reload. Once you've done that, you'll see that you can see the HTML of your current document currently being displayed. And you can select this, the file that contains your JavaScript from here if you're using an external JavaScript file. In my case, my JavaScript is in the same document, so I'm not going to do anything like that. So here's what we're going to do. Debugging JavaScript is often something that is partly a, a magic, partly some dark art. It's a lot of trial and error. And so what I'm going to do is just figure out where the code is actually working and where it is not. And clearly because the blue image is where the problems are actually occurring in, let's go ahead and try to see if this value is being hit properly. Now, in the old days, or even today, you probably could do this in several ways. You can use console.log to log these items to some area where you can look at it later. You can use an alert and actually you know, display a dialogue telling me this blue image exists. But what I'm going to show you is a much more efficient way, something that is far more useful for more, even more complicated situations. What I'm going to do is set a breakpoint. And the way you set a breakpoint is you, you can see these line numbers. You can see the left gutter. You can see this empty area next to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit click right here. And you'll see a red dot has now been 
has now is now showing. And what this indicates is that a breakpoint has been set. And a breakpoint, as you'll see, is as its name implies, it breaks your code at this particular point. It breaks your application at this particular point. Let me just refresh my document. Once I refresh my document, notice what happens. This line gets highlighted and everything seems to now be pivoting around what values are currently loaded in memory. So I have green image, I can hover over it right now, and you can see that image, hashtag green image, and you can see that the image is called green color PNG. You can see all this stuff is currently, what values these variables are currently storing. Blue image currently shows undefined, which is fine because the breakpoint occurs just before this actual line executes. And the way you can navigate between your code to make sure that you can see what's happening is these five buttons right here. The first one is to reload it, rerun your document. Next one is to continue just as if your application is just working just fine. And step into, step over, and step out. I will show you these very shortly. So blue image times fine. Let's go ahead and make sure this line actually executes. Let's go to the next line where we can ensure that the previous one is run and hit step into. Once I've done this, notice that now blue image is clearly being loaded. You can see image, hashtag blue image, and the image file is blue colored at PNG. So this seems to be working fine. And I can just continue to just step into my code and just see what's going on here. Body element, add event listener, all of that. Toggle class values is skip, add class, move class, end of the document. Great. So at least we can tell that blue image is being hit. So that helps somewhat. That at least means that what we have here at the very beginning isn't really the one that's causing the problem. So the next step is probably right here, the click event. And if this code is getting called when I hit the blue image, I should be able to hit the code that is currently running at this point right here. Let me go ahead and set a breakpoint at this point right here. And I'm going to hit the breakpoint and I'm going to go ahead and just hit the blue icon just to see what's going on. And yes, when I hit the blue icon, you can see that the toggle class values event handler is in fact being called. I can see element ID equals e.target.id, which is the blue image. Everything seems to be working fine. So let me just go ahead and step into and see what's going on here. So the first part is the element ID. First is an if statement. If the element ID equals green image. Clearly that's not the case. Element ID is blue image and it's not going to equal green image. So it should skip over it else if element ID equals equals blue image, and that seems to be correct. And why is that not working? Let's step into, and it actually skipped this line. Ideally, what I would want is this. I would want this add class value to be hit when my code is blue image. Let's see what's going on here. We just saw this line here. Let me just quickly go back to where I was. I, okay, I was a little overzealous in my clicking up the and skipping around. All right, element ID equals blue image. And yeah, that completely skips it. So clearly the problem is in this line right here. So let me take all these breakpoints out and let's just take a look at what's going on here. Element ID equals blue image equals, and here's the problem. Element ID has a value of blue image where the I is capitalized here the value is set to a lowercase i, which makes this if statement evaluate to false. And that's where the problem actually is. Let me go ahead and just make this change in my source equals blue image. Hit save. And let me just refresh my document. And this time around, let me hit, let me go from green to blue so you can see the color actually changing element ID equals blue image, and you can see that it matches the value you're looking for. And if I were to step into, you can see that now the body of this if statement, add class, remove class, and remove class, are going to be hit. The add class is being called. You can see this code just going through it. And if you don't want to go through all of this code, what you can do is hit either step over or step out. Step over allows you to just skip that entire block but step out allows you to go back to the function that actually was calling it, in which case the toggle class values 
function. And for really large documents, for a lot of debugging, it's very useful to be able to not find yourself going through every single line of JavaScript because you probably don't really want that. You just want to be able to inspect something that is, you know, more interesting and you can exit out, in and out of them depending on what you're looking at by using the step over and step out functions. So there you have it, a very quick overview of how you can use breakpoints to be able to quickly figure out what parts of your code are getting executed and what values they may be having at any given time so you can just more easily figure out how to fix something that isn't quite working.